Okay, let's go to graphics cards. Basically, a graphics card can be called many things, such as a video card, or a graphics accelerated card, display card, you name it. There's probably tons more names than that. Basically, its whole purpose is to put a display on the image for your TV, or monitor. Now, the graphics card is made of mainly two things. One is the GPU. A GPU is a dedicated graphics microprocessor optimized for floating point calculations, which are fundamental for 3D graphics rendering. The main attributes of a GPU are the core clock rate, which typically ranges from 250 megahertz to uh, 1200 megahertz in the modern cards and such. It also produces the shaders and such created for great detail. Now, the second part of it is the video memory, also known as the VRAM. Now, this can range anywhere from around 128 megabytes to 2 gigabytes, normally around this time of day and age. They come in different types of memory, and these are quite a lot like RAM in your normal computer and everything, but they're slightly different. They come in DDR, DDR2, GDDR3, and GDDR4. The higher number you go, the more upgraded the uh, memory is. And saying that, it becomes more efficient and normally consumes less power, but can also be raised to higher clock speeds because they consume less power, which in the end makes it less heat. Now, they become with two outputs for computers, like I said before, DVI and VGA. Sometimes they come with an S-Video, and sometimes they even come with an HDMI. S-Video and HDMI, of course, are to hook up to your TV. The 360 and Xbox, however, use an HDMI port to hook up to HDTVs, or other adapters and such to hook up to a standard definition TV if you don't have an HDTV. Now that we have that part covered and all, now we understand everything. Now it's time to actually get in to how powerful your 360's graphics card is or your PS3's graphics card. Now keep in mind, for a console such as a PS3 or Xbox, it uses the same exact kind of principle and idea and sometimes even the same kind of card that can be used in a computer. So basically, when I say the name of the card that's used inside of each console, you can easily look it up on the internet and find benchmarks. And benchmarks are just tests that show you how powerful the card is. Moving on. The 360 uses a graphics card that is a modified version of an ATI brand. ATI and NVIDIA are the main two brands that make graphics cards. Now, if you compare it to a GeForce, because not everyone's familiar with ATI, a GeForce around 7600 to 7800, in between there, is the amount of power that you would find. Now, those are just names for the graphics cards. Normally, the bigger the number, the better the card is. That's not always the case, but in this case, that's basically how it's working. The PS3, however, is around the same area. It has a graphics card that is unknown to the brand name to me right now, but I can tell you that it is pretty equivalent to a 7800. PC, however, can range all the way up to the newest card out right now, which is the GeForce 9800 GX2. What that is, it is a graphics card that has two GPUs on it, and they're both the GPUs based off of an 8800 GT. Now, the 8800 GT by itself is pretty much double the power of a 7800 by itself. Now, just because you combine two GPUs on one graphics card does not mean you're going to get double the performance. But, basically, it becomes, it's powerful enough to say that the new console can handle, can use it right now because of the fact that it costs $600 for that one piece of equipment by itself, which would make the console, which is for the average gamer, who does not want to spend a lot and wants to get a bang for the buck, would make it redundant. But, for a PC gamer, they're always looking for the highest detail they can get. And some people don't mind spending that much money. Me, however, I find that retarded. I don't know why anyone would spend that much money, honestly. But that's besides the point. There is, however, another advantage to high-end PC gaming. If you don't want to have a low-end computer, or just a medium or high-end, and you want to go for a super high-end, there's motherboards out there that you can buy that can hold up to four, that's right, four graphics cards at one time. Some people get four graphics cards that have the two GPUs on it, so that makes eight GPUs at once. However, that does not make it eight times more powerful, and that does cause problems. 
because there are things called drivers. This is software that tells the computer how to use and handle the hardware. The problem is, to make drivers that complex is very, very hard. And in return, the game will only utilize as much as it is programmed to. And the more programming is, the harder it is, and it makes it more complex to the point where most games don't use more than two GPUs. I don't know any game that uses eight. But I can tell you this, there are probably going to be games in the future that will. And if you're going to have this much pot stuff, you're going to be spending a lot of money for electricity. You would need around 1,000 watts of power supply to even power these graphics cards up. Now, saying that, you're probably going to be spending around 800 to 900 or more dollars a year just powering your computer to play games. So, in the end, consoles are good for a bang for your buck and everything, but overall, a PC really does have advantages. Despite the fact that a PC for gaming, custom built, is probably going to cost you around four or five thousand dollars for the most high-end thing you could ever get. Although to a console, which is the max you're going to spend is six hundred, then it's all down to how much money you want to spend. But that's all you really need to know. Those are the true facts, seeing specifically hardware itself to show which more is powerful. Remember, when people say gaming computer, they don't mean something from Walmart or anything. They mean normally handcrafted, hand-built themselves, stuff like that. So, one, and all three of these are powerful. There's no doubt about that. There's no getting around that fact. The only thing is, a PC, if you spend a few thousand, will get you much more powerful than anything else out there. And that's the end verdict. As for, P as for PS3 versus Xbox 360, that's a little more yeah, up to you, but honestly, the PS3 is made much more powerful in potential than Xbox 360, but it's so... the hardware is just not designed good, which makes it very hard for game developers to even make a game for it. And it takes much more coding, much more processes, and in the end, it's easier to make it for Xbox 360. It means they get to more spend more time detailing than coding, which in the end makes it, the Xbox 360 a little bit more better graphically. But in the end, truly, the, three, the PS3 is a bit more powerful, it's just that the power can't be utilized at this time.